Hello everybody, I'm Artillery J. Welcome back to Burn House Lane. Uh, last episode we jumped down off of this ledge into what looks like a pile of skulls here. Um, just gonna go ahead and play straight through. It looks like maybe I gotta chop this down. And here's the save point. Okay, cool. A lot's happened since the last save, so <laughs> I'm glad that there was one here. Alright. Oh, look, it's Moonlight again. Hey, buddy. Hey, come back. Stop leaving me in the dark. Kitty. Kitty, I'm not as fast as you. Slow down, dude. Oh, hi. What? Oh. My apologies. It's me. I was waiting for you and I dozed I off, I guess. You did take a long time getting here, to be fair. To be fair, yeah. Oh, Bronky. Yeah, well, it wasn't easy. But I'm here now. Yes, welcome. Did you really have to drag me down here? This place is... Hell. It's dark and it's warm. That's what cats like the most. Well, I'm not a cat. And I hate it. I did what you asked. Can I go home now? I... honestly thought you'd give up by now. But you are a persistent one. Four tasks completed. What can I say? Impressive. But you're not quite done yet. Hmm. Thanks. It's time for the final task. Yay. Are you ready for it? No. But give it to me anyway. Then listen carefully. You must tell someone the whole truth about yourself. The good and the bad. And all the dirt. Like you would to a best friend. If you had one, of course. But you can't hide anything. It won't work if you do. Why? What's the point of this? You must rid yourself of all this baggage. You people hold on to it for way too long. Fine. I'll just talk to Jenny. Hmm, as long as you tell her everything and she listens to it, that should be just fine. But, wait. How will I know if I've told her everything? You'll know because once it's done, a man called Mr. Fox will arrive at the farm. Let him in. He'll be so hungry he could eat a horse. Offer him food, but never speak to him. Do you understand? You cannot say even a single word to Mr. Fox or... Well, just don't. He's very... Peculiar about it. Yep. Um. Well, that's gonna be super awkward. Yes, well. There's that, and then there's dying of cancer. I know. I see your point. I'm just saying. At least I won't say the wrong thing for once. Once Mr. Fox is fed, he will go, and you will follow him to a place on the moors. He'll show you a spot where you must dig a hole and recover a treasure buried underground. Okay. With that in your possession, you will finally be able to remove the illness from your body. Oh, he will also require a drop of your blood, so 
Don't say I didn't warn you. Okay, I got it. Why do I gotta keep offering my blood? <laughs> Good. Go back now, get some rest. You're gonna need it. All right. Richard! Richard! Richard's alive? Well, no, I guess this is hell, so... Go on. Hop on his back. He won't bite. He's a very good boy. He's here to take you home. He's a good guy. Look at that horse. Thanks for the lift, Richard. Certainly appreciate it. Okay. It's a long, long walk. I'm glad that I've got a horse to ride. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Okay, I am still controlling him, I guess. Alright, he picked up speed awful quick there. Wasn't expecting it. It's a good horse. Alright, that's the end of chapter 5. And we're starting chapter 6. So, didn't realize I was that close to the end of chapter 5 last episode. Otherwise, I might have just played through. Mr. Fox. Come on. Aw, oh, Richard's gone. pretty upset about the death of the horse. Okay. Read Reddit note. Dear Angie, I did some shopping while you were gone. Karen told me you had some urgent business to take care of in Huntington, which is fine. You might find some of the food in there a bit odd but I assure you George will love it I couldn't wait for your return as I was in a hurry but I trust all is well George seems happy and well looked after for which I'm very grateful take care and see you soon Sarah let's go ahead and prepare a meal oh okay well no time for that I guess what's this can't believe this thing's back not sure if I want to carry a block of frozen lamb on me right now. A pile of dirty cups, plates, and pots. Someone's made a real mess while I was gone. Not sure why it's so red in here, but... Okay... I've not uh, used the toilet today, have I? Flush. Close lid. And still can't wash my hands. Can I go, I don't know if I'm supposed to go in the basement or go upstairs, but let's try the basement first. Despite Jenny's desperate efforts, it's still locked tight. Alright. 
I know I'm supposed to talk to Jenny, so I might as well make a confession. Let's check my room first. Do I have anything to put up here? Doesn't look like it. Let's go ahead and save. Alright. Let's go talk to Jenny. I think that's her room, right? Nobody in the bathroom. Is George in bed? No. Where the hell's George at? outside. Whoa, what the fuck? Oh, it's that dude. <laughs> I didn't know I didn't know what that was at first. Looks like they're having a party in here. Richard's death. Uh, he was being an arsehole. What? An arsehole. I was an arsehole. Yeah, I heard you. I just wanted you to say it again. Can I... There we go. Try to avoid some copyright and stuff. I was wrong. And I'm sorry. Please forgive me. What? Forgive me. It's all right, Kieran. I forgive you. Sometimes we all say things we don't mean. You just really loved that horse, didn't you? I did, as a matter of fact. But this here is Richard's week. Join us. Let's drink in his memory. I don't think so, Kieran. Come on, nurse. Red or white? Or do you prefer beer? Oh, I'm not a big drinker. Doing? Besides, I need a clear head for now. Then take a bottle with you for later. Go on, it's on me. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for the wine. Bottle of beer, okay. Jenny, we need to talk. What? Speak up, girl, I can't hear you. Turn it off, will you? It's too loud. You gotta speak up. I can't hear you. The music? It's, it's too... I know. <laughs> this song fucking rocks. We need to talk. Now? Now! But what about the party? What party? It's just you and Kieran. No. It's me, Kieran. <laughs> In this gorgeous bottle of Chardonnay, baby! Woohoo! I'm sure the Chardonnay won't mind if I borrow you for a minute. I guess, but. <gasps> hey! Do you have any cigarettes? I'd of really course. like to smoke one now. No, I don't. But, come on, you always smoke like a chimney. I know you have them. I'll just have one. What's the big deal? Do you really want to get cancer like me? Yeah, like one cigarette is going to kill me. 
Get a fucking grip, will you? I don't want you to start smoking again. Oh, for God's sake, Angie. Can you just chill the fuck out? One cigarette is all it takes. Before you know it, you'll be back smoking a pack every day. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. But guess what? You're not my fucking mother. So stop being so fucking patronizing, will you? I'm not giving you a cigarette, Jenny. Oh, duh, fine. Jesus, I'll ask somebody else then. But thanks for being a total asshole again. Can we just talk like normal people instead of fighting? What? Uh, Can we go outside and talk? Oh, you're a real party pooper, you know? But fine. Just wait for me behind the barn. You know, where Robert died. Richard! What? The horse's name was Richard. Ah, yeah, whatever. Uh, just wait for me by the barn. I'll be there in a minute. <sighs> okay. Meet Jenny behind the barn. Um, man, I kind of liked her at first, but she's... She's a pain in the ass, ain't she? Alright. So wait for her behind the barn. Of course, something stupid's gonna happen and... Oh, there you are. He's admiring the evening sky or just thinking about something that's hard to tell. You are right, George. Oh, I'm fine, dear. You? Yeah. Make your confession to George. I'm here to look after George, not the other way around. Okay. He's a lovely man, but would he even understand someone like me? Okay. Alright. Behind the barn. Jenny, no. Oh, Richard, mate, you didn't magically come to life. It all must have been just a strange dream. And we're just gonna leave him there to rot. Covered in flies. Okay. I guess I can wait for her now. Don't talk to Mr. Fox. Give him food, but don't talk to him. Well, guess what I found? Or wait, I'll give you a clue. It's about this long, it's known to cause heart and lung diseases, and it usually comes in a pack of 20. Look, I just didn't want you to get back to your old habit. Especially now that you've been drinking. You're literally doing it all the time yourself. Oh, so please, don't be a fucking hypocrite. I'm having it whether you like it or not. Oh, this is heaven. Oh, why did I ever quit? There you Jenny, are, hooked again. There's something I want to talk to you about. Remember when I told you that I had cancer? Cancer? Uh, yes. But didn't you say you were getting better? No. This is incurable, inoperable lung cancer. It'll keep growing until it kills me. Are you sure? You don't look like you're dying to me. Wait, what? Of course I'm sure. Just because there's no blood pouring out of my eyes and I don't crawl on the floor doesn't mean that I'm fine. For now. I don't believe you. My pap had cancer, and he looks like Uncle Fester. You know, from the Adams family. And he puked a lot. That's because you probably had chemo. 
I'm not doing it. It's too late. And I've seen what it does to people. I don't want to die stuck in a hospital bed. I know a good doctor in LA. I'll give you his number when I get back home. You don't understand? This can't be cured. Not by the doctors, anyway. I, I know that I fed Richard. Like, every single day that I was on the farm, I fed him. I hurt myself sometimes. I know it's stupid. As a nurse, I even used to learn about it. There was one time I was in so much emotional pain that I tried it, and it did bring me some relief. It made me hate myself, too. I think sometimes that if I hate myself, it will make it easier just to... Look, it's just a phase. We all have to go through it at some point. I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah? Yeah, I'd show you my scars, but in my business, you know? I had to have them removed. With lasers. Hurts like hell, but this shit really works. You should try it. Okay. I tried to kill myself once. I climbed a chair with a rope around my neck. When I jumped. But, you know, the rope snapped. Huh? Cool. Ballsy. Oh, I've never had the courage, but I'd be lying if I said I never thought about it. You? Why? You have everything. I don't. But it will get a lot easier once I open that damn door in the basement, that's for sure. You're just obsessed with that door, aren't you? You have no idea. Killed someone. I killed someone. It was in self-defense, and I. Please stop. I don't want to know. But my lawyer always warns me to stay away from this sort of stuff. No offense, Angie. I get it. You did some bad shit, didn't we all? But <laughs> I'll be damned if I get dragged to court as a witness for something you did. It could potentially ruin my career. So. You know. Just keep your mouth shut and uh, you'll be alright. I'm sure. I want to live. But I don't even know how to anymore. I can feel the doom clock ticking above my head and it's driving me insane. I should make a bucket list like other people do. To live while I still can. Do cool, crazy stuff, like bungee jumping, or swimming with fucking dolphins. But instead, here I am, unable to accept what's coming, desperately trying to cheat death. But no one has that kind of power. Least of all me. <gasps> hey! I swam with dolphins in the Bahamas last year. Wh what? Uh-huh. Did you know? The dolphins don't really smile. I mean, they look like they do. But they don't. It's just the shape of their face. Uh, 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 uh. Right. Good to know. That's very useful knowledge for me. Thank you. Are you being sarcastic now? Of course I am. Because, damn, I'm trying my best here to take your mind off all these problems. You really need to let shit go. Yeah, I will. Sure. I get it, Jenny. As a matter of fact, if I was a dolphin, I'd be smiling right fucking now. Ugh, you are being sarcastic. That's because you're not listening to me. Fine. I'll try harder. Jesus! God, she's annoying. I don't really have any friends. I mean, 
I have colleagues from work, well, mostly just Tracy, because working for the agency, I travel a lot, covering shifts in hospitals and nursing homes all across the country. The pay is good, but you don't really get enough time to bond with anyone. This job here is quite different. I don't usually spend that long in one place. Angie? Why are you telling me this? I just need a friend, I guess. A real one. I'm gonna open this. Be loud for a second. Apologies. There we go. Someone like you? Gross. Me? Angie, are you blind? You really think I'm a good friend material for anyone, let alone someone like you. Look at me. I'm a Hollywood star. I got to the top by sleeping with every man that wanted me and by destroying every woman that stood in my way. It's in my job description to act like a spoiled fucking bitch, to demand, to take anything I want. And I have no time or desire to be anyone's friend because I know that in the end, I'll have to stab them right in the back. I always do. I know there's a part of you that cares. You weren't looking for me in the woods. You risked your life. I was bored. This isn't the real you. Then what do you know about the real me? You're a drug addict, Jenny. And if you wanted to, you could get help. And you could get better. Wow. That'll teach you to mind your own fucking business. Oh, and by the way, I think you made it all up. You don't really have cancer, do you? You just wanted people to feel sorry for you. And that's fucking pathetic, you know? Wow. Well, that was shitty. Okay, so, um, fuck Jenny. Oh, what in God's name happened to you? It's nothing. Trying to fool an old man? That's not going to work, dear. I might be old, but I'm not blind. There's time to open this big bag of worries. You've been carrying it around for weeks. All right. I'll tell you. There's a disgusting, ugly cancer growing inside my chest. It's here to kill me. And there's nothing I can do to stop it. I probably shouldn't even be here, but... I'd convince myself that I should do this one last job. I thought this would pay for the trip my late husband always dreamed of. Japan. It always seemed so... cool. But now that I think about it... It's not even my dream. Do I really want to go there? Or am I desperately trying to run away from people saying they're sorry and the way they look at me? To hide and pretend that I'm still fine and nothing's happened. And yes, I was married. It felt real. It was real. But my husband was a sick man. We both knew our time was short. And no matter how loved he made me feel, I accepted we wouldn't live happily forever after. And yet, it still surprised me. How quickly it all happened. Suddenly, I was alone. But I promised James that I would be strong. And I was determined to keep that promise no matter what. I made an effort to get dressed every morning, to eat, to go to work. 
knowing that in time the pain would become easier to bear. And then this happened. First the cough, then the chest pains, and blood on the tissue. I couldn't believe the same fucking thing was happening to me. I lost a husband, but I wasn't ready to lose my life. I mean, I promised him I'd live on. But they called me in, and they confirmed what I already knew. I remember they all looked down at their shoes whenever they mentioned the word cancer. That fucking cancer. Was it because I smoked more since James had died? But some people smoke all their lives, and they never get sick. Life had taken so much from me already, and then it still decided it wasn't enough yet, so it came back for what's left. What did I do to be punished like this? Why me? It's not fucking fair. So, now I know how this ends. I get nowhere. My whole life was fucking pointless. I achieved nothing, and those few people that know me will soon forget I ever existed. And on top of it, I'm probably losing my mind, because I've seen things. A talking cat from a burned house. Different worlds. Disfigured creatures. But that's probably just my cancer spreading into my brain, because I'm sure it was all in my head. George just tired and scared. And now I'm covered in mud and I don't even have any clean clothes to put on. And I... Damn. Thank you, George. I... I needed to let it all out, I guess. And now you also need a nice cup of tea. I'll make you one. But first, let's get you a change of clothes. I'm alright. These will dry soon. No, no. You should take one of the jumpers from the line. Anne, there's a pair of jeans there that looks about your size, too. No, I can't. I insist. They're Sarah's old clothes. She ain't worn them in years. Nah, they're too small for her anyway. Moy was thinking I'd give them to a charity shop in Honiton. But this is even better. And it'll save us a trip in a town. Yeah? Of course. Go on, grab one and go get changed. I'll put the cat on. Thanks, George. <clears throat> He said on the line, I, I don't know what he's talking about. Is it over here, maybe? Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's take these trousers first. And then a sweater, but which one? Um... Yeah, let's take that one. Although it is nearly Christmas, so when I'm recording this. So maybe that would have been a good choice. Um is it this bathroom? Or this one's George's maybe. Yeah, this is George's bathroom, my bad. My bad, George. I gotta use the one downstairs. Right here. Well, maybe I gotta go. I gotta go to my room to change. That makes more sense. Go 
beat Jenny to death. What a bitch. Alright. Um. And suddenly I'm back in the 80s. This isn't just a sweater, it's a time machine. Okay, cool. We're dressed. Join George in the kitchen. Say nothing. Burn Cat told me not to speak a single word to this guy. I'll remain silent, as strange as it may seem. Now for the second part of the task, feeding Mr. Fox. What sort of food could this guy be into? Sheep, obviously. Mushrooms. Lettuce. Damn it. Sardines. Jalapeno. Red onion. Bread. Yeah, I'd eat that. But how do I feed the, uh, Mr. Fox? His mask is so lifelike, he, like he's an actual fox with a body of a man. Alright, didn't need to cook it. Wash that frozen chunk of lamb meat down. Just offer him a sandwich, maybe? Shit, he's still hungry. <laughs> All right, um, let's go ahead and fix the audio here. There we go. I'm gonna make him another sandwich. I think he wants something else. And the dogs are going crazy there. Please tell me I don't have to feed him, Richard. going crazy. How did he get here so quickly? Can he bloody teleport or something? You're gonna make me fit him in the horse, aren't they? It's getting weirder and weirder. He's following me now.
did say so hungry that he could eat a horse, right? pieces. Sorry, Richard. Thanks. New objective added. Follow Mr. Fox. Mr. Fox. Ugh. Let's hope we don't bump into George. Who knows what he'd do if he saw this masked weirdo. the sheep too? You bastard. Where is he taking me? Oh good. He didn't he didn't stop at the sheep pen. Alright. Guess we're going this way. But where are we going? That's the question. Um, oh. Oh no. This won't shut him up for long. I must stop this idiot before he opens his mouth. <laughs> Alright. Sorry, mate. I had no choice. shovel and we're gonna go ahead and save sorry I needed a smoke break real quick this is a lot of walking I didn't even read my other options I was just like headbutt them because timers running short so must be the place Cat was talking about. Mr. Fox keeps pointing at this spot. Dig. Diggy, diggy, dig, dig, dig. 
All right. What the indeed? What's inside? It looks deep, but I can't really see through this red fog. Well, there's only one way to find out, I guess. Of course there is. Okay, sorry, I had to check on the recording real quick. All right, so. Let's, let's see what all we got here. We've got a suitcase. I don't know why, but I feel like someone's left it here for me on purpose. Uh, okay, no idea. Okay, it blocks the bathroom door. Meds, they're everywhere. An old movie is playing, but there's something wrong with the sound. It's a big, dusty wardrobe. There's nothing there. Oh, you know what? There we go. Um, anchor arm pitchfork, maybe? Anchor arm pitchfork. There we go. There's a key. Take apartment six key. Yes, please. can't get inside the doors boarded up and a smoke real quick of course have to have my cigarettes all right there's another door here how odd the boy in the painting makes me feel both sad and creep happy at the same time smells nice I think it's a sandalwood kinky lady but with a face like this she'll have a hard time finding a boyfriend no matter how long her eyelashes are the door is blocked by a pile of ashes but even if it wasn't it's clearly missing a doorknob Light bulb. I know why you came here. You want the box, don't you? The box? No need to pretend. I know you want it. Everyone wants it. Well, that's not entirely true. I don't want it. But you're new here, and why else would you come to this crumbling old house other than to find that damn box? Am I right? Mm -hmm. I was told to look for the treasure. This box sounds like it could be it. I'm sure it is, after all. There's nothing else here that's worth looking for. Okay. Just a whole lot of suffering, wherever you go. Who are you? Um, look. Whenever I try to remember my name, I get this huge fucking headache. It literally feels like my brain's being stabbed with hundreds of tiny knives. That doesn't so, sound comfortable. No offense, but I'll just skip that part, may I? It's not like it matters anyway. I'm just another ghost living on Burnhouse Lane, waiting for something. 
I think it should be happening any day now. Mm. Why do you not want the box for yourself? Oh, that's because I know what's inside. And it's not for me. Or rather, I know I'd be very tempted to use it because I really don't want to die. But that would make me someone that I don't want to be. So I'll pass. Thank you. But you can have it. Mm. It's okay. I don't judge. Thanks. Oh, I'm not going to waste it. Tell me more about this box. Well, it's black, which, by the way, happens to be my favorite color. And it's made of wood, about this big. But it's not the box itself that you want. It's what's in it. And what's that? Oh, I won't spoil it for you. You'll see for yourself when you get it. If you get it, I mean. Because it's not going to be easy. Do you know where I can find this box? Yeah. It's in the other building, right across this great big chasm. Look. Oh. Well. But how can I get there? I know a way. I could take you there. But there's something we should do before we go. And I know this will sound a bit crazy. But we'll need a cat to help us. Naturally. The bent cat? You know him? What? No, he's not burned. He's white as snow, with a black stripe on his tail. He kind of looks like a big raccoon. You know what I mean? Moonlight? Yes, so you know him. Oh, we've been to hell and back together. He's an old friend. Where is he? Well, it's a long bloody street. He could be anywhere. But you can summon him. Summon? A cat? Summon a cat, indeed. How the hell do I summon I mean, a cat? I've kind of been summoning cats this whole well, game. Well, there's only so. one way I know. So, tell me. Can you by any chance play the piano? What? Um, yeah. I can. I used to be pretty good. But what's that got to do with bloody cats? They love it. How do you know? I have this friend who always opens the window and plays for the neighborhood cats. And they all come running like she's their cat mother calling them for dinner. Shall we ask your friend to play, then? No. She... She can't come to Burnhouse Lane. Thankfully. So, yeah. It's gonna have to be you, I'm afraid. Oh, and make sure you put out a bowl of milk for the cat first. They like that. Okay. Bowl of milk, milk play the piano. And music. Yeah, I can do that. Is there anything in particular I should play? I don't think it matters, as long as the music is coming straight from your heart. I haven't played in years. Don't worry. It'll all come back to you. I'm sure of it. You're sick. Like me. Aren't you? Everyone's sick on Burnhouse Lane. Haven't you noticed that yet? We're all dealing with it differently. Some of us give up right at the start. They put a gun to their head and pull the trigger. They swallow poison. Anything, really, just to escape the horrors waiting for them here. Then, 
There's the weak ones. They try to fight, but how can they win against their own minds? So they all turn into pathetic shadows of their former selves, and they wander the dark corners of this place like zombies. And then there's us. We are strong enough to see it through to the end, but at what cost? It's time for me. I'll talk to you later, girl. Be careful out there. Nice. I heard strange noises outside earlier tonight. Okay, so I gotta find milk. And, uh... Play the piano. Save it again. So that was a lot of dialogue to get through, so. Alright, let's head on down. Wheelchair. Something above me. I feel like something's crawled out through this hole who knows it could still be lurking it could still lurk around here it's stuck the second hand keeps going back and forth the body looks terribly deformed and it's covered in red oozing boils there's no doubt this man died after a long Ill illness in the end it turned him into a monster The lamp had been mounted over the bed. It keeps flickering. Turn it off. Remove the light bulb. All right, I've got two light bulbs, so that's... I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to use them for. But I've got them. I won't touch this one. It's all busted. It could give me a nasty shock. A wheelchair, whoever lived here, they were either disabled or too sick to walk. Probably the person in the other room there that's a gross corpse. Can't go that way. It's locked from the inside. Of course it is. Head on down. way to go. Go this way, I guess. Mm. Seems like maybe that's the way that I'm supposed to go, so let's go this way first. See if there's anything that way. Ah, okay. 30 steps to nowhere is what it looks like it says there. The M A C H the machine, maybe? It's locked from the inside. Okay. Well, fuck me. Back up. Across here, through this door, and then up. I'm sure that pipe will be used for something at some point. Um, looks big and heavy, but with a bit of effort, I should be able to push it out of the way. Unlock apartment door. Oh, okay. So which way should I push it? Mm, maybe that way. Push it from the left side. Alright. 
That's what I was hoping for. All right. Go ahead up and save and we'll uh, end this episode here. Um because yeah it is it is right around an hour. So um yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and pop a smoke. Pop a smoke and uh, we'll call it here guys. I hope that you enjoyed this episode of Burn House Lane. Um I am really enjoying it. We're nearing the end I think, so Hopefully another episode or two and we'll be complete. So I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves. Later.